When people see a headline like Hyundai hires former Tesla Robotics VP Milan Kovac, it's tempting to frame it as Tesla losing talent. But I think that's the wrong story to tell because this isn't just Tesla. What we're watching is something much bigger, the second great diaspora of humanoid robotics talent. For nearly two decades, one company defined the entire field, Boston Dynamics. They solved locomotion when everybody else thought it was impossible. They trained the people who would later build the very systems that challenged them. Then the center of gravity shifted Deep-pocketed players like Tesla and Google DeepMind industrialized those ideas. They scaled perception, autonomy, developed new neural net-based architectures, and are working on real-world deployment. And now that talent is dispersing again, outward, seeding an entire ecosystem of humanoid robotics companies that don't need the backing of giant, deep-pocketed companies. This is, I think, the Cambrian explosion moment in humanoid robotics. It's the moment humanoid robots stop being owned by a few giants and start becoming an industrial ecosystem. Them. Let's take a look. Before we start, a quick shout out to my channel sponsor, Joa. They make amazing accessories for your Tesla and other EVs and have incredible warranties and customer service too. In fact, I use their accessories daily. Be sure to check the link in the description to get 5% off a fan-cooled phone charger, a portable tire inflator, a fold-out lap table, and so much more. And they make perfect gifts for you and your EV-loving friends too. So check out the link to get 5% off, and now let's get back to it. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know It All. This video today is inspired by this particular article that just came out a few hours ago from the Korean Economic Daily. Hyundai Motor hires ex-Tesla robotics specialist as Boston Dynamics director. So yeah, there is an irony. As I noted in the cold open, Boston Dynamics basically started the entire humanoid robotics paradigm, right? They were the ones that started working on this many, many years ago back in, I think it was either the late 80s or the early 90s. They were originally a university research lab and then they turned into Boston Dynamics. And over several Several decades, they actually defined the field and did the original research and basically made the impossible possible. They made humanoids able to walk and to do useful physical tasks. But of course, over the past several years, they clearly lost the lead and now they're playing catch up. So there is an irony to the fact that Hyundai bought Boston Dynamics and now they're hiring back Tesla's former lead developer on the Optimus project, as well as several vehicle projects as well. Anyway, the article is rather brief, so I'll go ahead and read it. The hiring follows the appointment of a former Tesla and NVIDIA engineer to lead its advanced vehicle platform and its mobility software unit 42 dot. So clearly, Hyundai is working towards that autonomous future. And just like Tesla, they see it as more than just four-wheeled vehicles. They see it as four-limbed vehicles as well in the form of humanoid robots. Hyundai Motor Group said on Friday it has appointed Milan Kovac, a former Tesla vice president and specialist in autonomous driving and robotics, as a group advisor and outside director of its wholly owned unit Boston Dynamics Incorporated. The appointment comes after Boston Dynamics unveiled its next-generation humanoid robot Atlas at CES 2026 last Last week, and it's a really, really creepy video. I'll try to find the video of it at CES. It's super creepy the way that it actually gets up and everything. But continuing here, as the group accelerates efforts to commercialize the robot alongside its four-legged spot and logistics robot Stretch, Kovac, a Belgian national, joined Tesla in 2016 after working at image sensor developer Soft Kinetic. At Tesla, he played a key role in developing the company's autopilot driver assistance system and led engineering for its humanoid robot Optimus. From 2019 to 2022, Kovac oversaw the development of Tesla's second-generation autopilot, which used in-house chips and camera-based vision technology, in other words, the stuff that is coming to fruition today, and became a benchmark in the global auto industry. He was promoted to vice president in 2024 after leading factory pilot operations for Optimus. Hyundai Motor Group made several high-profile hires this month. On Tuesday, it appointed Park Min Woo, a former Tesla and NVIDIA engineer, to lead its advanced vehicle platform division and its mobility software unit 42 DOT. So with that being said, let's back things up a little bit and talk about Boston Dynamics that was the kind of original forge of the humanoid robotics form. So over more than two decades, they developed dynamic balance, legged locomotion, control under uncertainty. That's a very important thing. In other words, the world is a very uncertain environment and things have to be able to work in that sort of fuzzy input space. So why does this matter? Well, many humanoid and robotics leaders trained. They learned what they know at Boston Dynamics. So Boston Dynamics talent seeded in 
industrial robotics, defense robotics, and early autonomy research. So of course, in retrospect, this is somewhat ironic because Boston Dynamics helped create and train the talent that would later outscale them. But Boston Dynamics struggled with a couple of things. Number one, and the biggest thing was commercialization. They were always kind of a research lab and they never really understood how to scale and commercialize their technology. Second, and in line with this, of course, is productization. And third is their software. Their software was the old heuristics based type of software. It was not the modern neural network architecture. Now for a long time, that was the correct path because that was the only path. Neural networks were not smart enough to be able to deal with this. But of course, in the past five years or so, things have completely changed around. And now neural networks have taken the lead in terms of humanoid autonomy. So this led to about a decade ago, 2015, 2016, depending on how you want to count when it started, to deep pocketed industrial companies beginning to support the robotics push. Obviously, Tesla took the lead with this, in particular with four wheeled robots as opposed to four limbed robots. They focused on vision only perception, which is a huge leap forward. They worked on cost constraints, in other words, making it real world compatible. And they worked on factory deployment at scale. And of course, very importantly, they commercialized robotics via their full self driving software and hardware stack. In other words, they sold the software and hardware to customers who then utilized it and helped Tesla to train the next generation. And now, of course, they're working on a four limbed robot, Optimus. And it's very important to understand that from the get go, Elon and Milan and the team have been focused on making this an industrializable humanoid robot. In other words, not a research project, but something that would eventually be able to scale to millions and then billions of these robots being built. And then the other really big player over the past decade or so is Google DeepMind. And of course, that's with the support of Google, one of the largest companies in the world. They've worked on world models. They've worked on reinforcement learning. They've worked on multimodal reasoning, and they've worked on reason to action models. In other words, understanding the world and then acting on that understanding. And of course, this has all been neural network architecture based. Google DeepMind has been less hardware centric, although they have built some robots, but they've been critical for doing research on cognition and planning. So while Boston Dynamics for the past 10 years or so, or at least up until the last couple of years, was focused on what they did best, which was becoming more and more archaic, these other companies absorbed and generalized what Boston Dynamics was doing and pushed it to the next generation. And that takes us to now the modern sort of diaspora, the dispersion of talent from these large deep pocketed companies to a multitude of new companies that have less funding, but are able to collectively experiment in much more radical and rapid form. So of course, as we started with, we've got Milan and Park Min Wu who have been hired by Boston Dynamics, which is now of course part of Hyundai. We've also got Sunday Robotics and Scott Walter and I did a video on that. If you haven't seen that, you should definitely check it out up here. They have multiple former Optimus and autopilot engineers over over at Sunday Robotics. And we've got Tesla engineers showing up across the board in the humanoid robotics space. They've been working on logistics robots, consumer humanoids, industrial automation, and are working at many of the frontier labs across the Western world. And then at the same time, there are deep mind engineers who have gone out and started working. One notable company is UMA that has talent not only from deep mind, but from Tesla and Nvidia and also Hugging Face. So they have quite the stable of engineering talent there. And this is just one of many cognition heavy startups that are blending foundation models, embedded AI, and real-world deployment. So these are not just random individuals, they're coherent clusters of talent that are leaving together and going to other places. And it mimics what we've seen recently in the generative AI industry in the past couple of years. The talent pool is very small, and the competition for the few with those skills and experience is fierce. That only happens as a field matures, and investors can see the kind of, quote, light at the end of the tunnel of these robots becoming economically viable and then profitable. And of course, in an ironic twist, Boston Dynamics is now the recipient of the seeding. So they were the first ones to seed the talent out to the rest of the world. And now the rest of the world has trained these people further and they are coming back to Boston Dynamics, which is now part of Hyundai, which is why Boston Dynamics hiring Tesla trained leadership makes reasonable sense as Boston Dynamics shifts focus from viral demos and small scale lab production to commercialization and from pure mechanics to autonomy at scale. So Boston Dynamics is fighting not to be replaced, but to be reintegrated into the very ecosystem it helped to create. And of course, at the same time, Hyundai is clearly making a major play in the robotic space. They want to become a leader in that space, which is a pretty wise idea, to be honest. And before we close out this video, I think it's important to talk about China because they've been on a parallel track. I've been talking about the Cambrian explosion in the Western world, but there is a parallel thing happening in China as well. But it's a little bit different. Again, it's hard to get real insight into the Chinese industrial area, at least from the United States where I am. But as far as I can see, Chinese humanoid 
robots aren't being driven by talent dispersal, but they're being driven by state-backed scale and manufacturing integration. There are a lot of humanoid robotics companies in China. Some of the big ones are Unitree Robotics, UB Tech, Fourier Intelligence, and of course Xiaomi, which is actually making quite the play in that area. These companies move fast, they iterate their hardware very aggressively, and they leverage the massive native supply chains they have in China. And as the demos show, these Chinese humanoid robots are extraordinarily impressive mechanically. They're developed very, very quickly. They have clean actuation and they have tight packaging. But the generalized reasoning, the sort of brain of it all, and long horizon planning are still the hard part for them. We haven't seen a lot of demonstrations of that. And those problems, of course, don't scale simply by throwing factories at them. So while China has a serious advantage in hardware velocity and manufacturing, the Western sort of diaspora, as I'm calling it, has an advantage in software, autonomy, and systems integration. So while this video is about talent flow and how ideas and people move between institutions, China's humanoid push is largely centralized and vertically directed. It's a different phenomenon with different implications, and it really deserves another video. And if you want to see that, let me know in the comments, and please consider subscribing to this channel and click the bell notification icon so that you get notified when that next video comes out. So while China is building humanoids through centralized scale, what we're watching here in the West is something else entirely. It's a diffusion of hard-won experience from Boston Dynamics to Tesla and DeepMind, and now outward into many companies that are forming a full ecosystem. And what they're collectively teaching us is that agility in development and the ability to manufacture at scale are critical to the future of humanoid robotics. So why is this diaspora good news, even for the likes of Tesla and Google DeepMind? Well, first of all, talent dispersal leads to parallel experimentation, which means you're able to do a lot more things at once. And fewer monocultures means that there are more attempts from conservative types of attempts to really, really zany things. I've seen robots out there that are completely wacky, and yet some of them seem to be working fairly effectively. And that all leads to faster iteration cycles and more of a convergence on what actually works. So we can relate this to the original actual natural Cambrian explosion, where nature experimented with the downright bizarre during this time period, but that ended up creating the bedrock for further evolution to today's plants and animals, including us human beings. In the more tech space, we have things like Bell Labs dispersing their talent into a lot of areas, including what became Silicon Valley. We have the diaspora from Fairchild Semiconductor to Intel to the semiconductor ecosystem explosion in the 1960s and 70s. And of course, related to Elon Musk, we have PayPal seeding out the talent and ideas into the fintech ecosystem. And so what we're seeing now is humanoid robotics after a very, very long, slow beginning of that ramp, making that same transition from very, very early experimentation and lab type demonstrations to full scale usability and industrialization. And a lot of that is the result of this talent that's been dispersed from these companies out into the world. So the first phase, which Boston Dynamics led, proved that robots could actually move around and keep their balance. The second phase proved that they could actually think, and that's the phase we're sort of still in and just transitioning out of. And the next phase will prove that they can work. Intelligence, evolved mechanics, and the ability to build at scale are what's going on right now. And what we're seeing is funding requirements reducing from billions of dollars to hundreds of millions and now even tens of millions of dollars. The talent can start flowing outward instead of inward, and that's when mass experimentation can really happen and when a technology can go from the lab to the world at large and change the very future of the world. Alrighty, folks, that's what I've got for you today. Let me know in the comments what you think about all of this. Am I correct that this is overall a very good thing, or do you think that this is actually a bad thing? What do you think about China? Let me know all of that stuff. While you're down there, if you don't mind liking the video, it really helps other people to find it. And if you really want to help the channel out and give me an early birthday present, my birthday's coming up in just a couple of weeks, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell notification icon, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Thank you.